see you walking off into a battle. I wonder what you are tired of just, oh my God, with your conviction from God and everything that God says he is, and you believe it absolutely, that he's absolutely what he says. I wonder what that looks like when you find somebody in the planet that believes God like he believes that he is. I mean, those are those people that are moving through, that are going through. I heard, I was listening to within the carpet there in Orlando, an apostle of Joshua Giles was talking about moving from transition to transfer. And you know, when we're talking about transition, you know, we told you there's three phases to transition. Now, irrespective of which one you're in, it all represents transition. It's kind of like the Alpha and the Omega. Well, praise Jesus. Well, listen, we want to welcome all of you tonight. We thank God that he's absolutely God. We're thankful. We welcome you guys one more time. Another uh, Sin of Egypt Institute on this Tuesday night. I want to welcome all of you. Thank God for those that staff, those that are in the room, those that are, that are here, that came from north to east to south and the rest to be with us on tonight. And we also uh, want to welcome all of you that are listening to us on tonight live stream. We welcome all of you. And so we thank God all the way live one more time. We thank God for Pastor Alvin Garrett Sr. Uh, from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Faith in action. And so we thank God as always. Man of God, thank you. God bless you. Welcome. Pastor, can you hear me? Is that a problem? Volume again? He can't. He can't hear us. I guess we'll have to work with him, talk to him, and, and let's see. While, while in the meanwhile, back at the ranch. Well, listen. As uh, we're working on Pastor Garrett, trying to see what's going on with his volume, and what's taking place there on tonight, um, uh, they'll get that worked out. But in the meanwhile, I'm going to invite all you guys come go with us. We're going to go uh, before the throne. Then we'll come back and see if we can get Pastor Garrett in on tonight. Well, listen, let's approach the throne. So, Father, once again, we're thankful, we're grateful, we're privileged. We honor the heavens tonight in the name of the Son. We're acknowledging his sovereignty, the absoluteness of his being, the magnificence of his person. And so, as we're welcoming all of you that are, that are listening to us on tonight. We honor Holy Spirit tonight. Father God, we approach the throne, believing God, thankful to God, grateful tonight. As, as we're looking to Holy Spirit leadership, he's our teacher, he's our leader, he's our counselor, he's our guide. He's our instructor. He's our standby. So tonight, as we look at his leadership, and we're asking on tonight that he's going before us tonight. And I'm asking you, God, unlock, open up the holy writ. We're asking in faith. We're believing God for every single one of these that have gathered. And so as we look to the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us tonight, and we're asking you tonight as, you, as he's going to take those things of Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and disclose them, reveal them unto us. We're asking you that which is on Papa's mind, that which is in his heart, that he'll begin to reveal and dis expose and God declare those things unto us tonight. And Father, we surrender. We recognize our own frailty before the throne, but that we also recognize the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit tonight, right now, to convey Papa's mind and to reveal his heart. And so as I'm asking, well, we're giving information tonight. We need Holy Spirit to make it revelation, the hearts and the minds of the people in the awesome, in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. So we're thankful to tonight. We're grateful tonight. And Lord, I'm asking you in advance. We, we cancel every assignment of the wicked one. We overthrow. We're cutting off. We're canceling out. And we're crushing the head of everything, every assault that the wicked one is trying to devise among us tonight. And so, Father, we're thankful to God. We trust you in your power. Trust your anointing that you will lead, direct, and instruct us tonight. And I'm asking you to speak, uh, convey unto us this night. We're asking in faith. Meet this people tonight at the point of need. Demonstrate, manifest your presence among us. We're asking in faith in the awesome, in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray tonight. So listen, as we're thankful to God, grateful to God, privileged by God tonight, and thanking him for all that heaven has afforded us, all that he's done, all that he's doing, because we are privileged by God once again to be back uh, in the house, <coughs> in the house of God, among those, uh, among in the land of the living, among those uh, who are lively stones unto our God tonight. Amen. And so, and, and as we're thankful to God, grateful to God, privileged God by God tonight, and as we're waiting, anticipating, and giving any assistance here um, to be able to get my thing. 
And listen, as, as we anticipate that real shortly, I don't know if they contacted him uh, to, to find out what's going on, but um, we're going to go ahead and know that one of the things that um, uh, t- tonight as we are, we are honoring the heavens and we honor the spirit within God, acknowledge him here in this place. Uh, in Jesus' name, we're thankful. So listen. Uh, as we're preparing right here in this place and we're believing God uh, with all of you and uh, we know that one of the things Pastor Gary normally just sets the track for us and hopefully he'll get back in uh, you know, working out whatever the kinks are on his behalf. But listen, one of the things that I know that on last week um, uh, he's talking about our walk and he, he, he's coming out of one of the, the passages that he's using uh, it's out of Ephesians uh, the fourth chapter. We're going to go there and we'll, we'll, we'll begin uh, right then. I'm going to ask you to come go with me to Ephesians, if you don't mind. And we'll go there <coughs> to kind of get things get things really started, give him time to, to get back in there. Um, I don't know what's going on, man. You know, every so often we have this challenge, and I'm not, not sure what, what we got going on on tonight. But if you don't mind, uh, I'm going to get um, this here. I, my bag. Um, I need these other books over here, if you guys don't mind. All right, so let's do this. Uh, any, f- well, my computer is, is, is spinning, it's turning, it's, uh, what, are they, what, are, what do they call that when it's, uh, when it's turning, churning, uh, like it's trying to get to that place it hadn't made it. But we'll, we'll do this while we're, while we're waiting on that, if you don't mind. In Ephesians, we said we'll go there. And as in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, uh, when I ask the saints to be praying. Listen, you guys that are out there listening to us tonight, if you don't mind, please be, uh, apply your faith tonight against, you know, and we know how the enemy tries to, to work sometimes against things, but we know where the greater one lives. Thank God we know his address. Amen? And so now, if you don't mind, we're turning to second Ephesians, fourth chapter, um, four, beginning with... Uh, you don't mind, fourth chapter, start with that first, first verse, you don't mind. So we find out what's going on when we come, come back, Pastor Gary. Ephesians 4 and 1, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There in one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended into the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Amen. Well, listen, uh, looks like Pastor's trying to break through right here. Uh, just got to get him in out of the studio and bring him in. Uh, Pastor, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, sir. I apologize for that. Bless you My sir. internet jumped off. Okay. Well, listen, uh, if you don't mind, uh, we, we're right here. We're, we're just starting to read those verses. So you can go ahead and bring us on in. Okay. So I, I, again, I, I apologize for that, uh, Apostle. And uh, so thankful for you all being you patient with me. Sir. You know you are forgiven, right? <laughs> uh, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, you're learning fast. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. Forgive one another as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Amen. Uh, again, I am so thankful, Apostle, uh, you allowing me uh, this opportunity. Thank God for the opportunity, uh, you know, to uh, together to share the word of God. And I, I lost where you had begun, but, uh, you know, you and I had already uh, kind of dialogued a little bit this afternoon on the particular subject in which we have been discussing on learn to stand to walk. And, uh, you know, we have said that we will uh, be continuing that teaching and in that you have given me an uh, uh, opportunity to to share 
this with you. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you now. You're okay. Better. Yes, sir. Okay, then uh, uh, in that you have given me the opportunity to uh, share this with you, uh, we have said that we are going to continue to talk to uh, the hearers, the believers on this particular subject, because in this particular subject, uh, we, we're talking about learn, and we're talking about stand, and we're talking about walk. And uh, we made known unto the hearers on last week that uh, in Paul writing, when Paul was talking to the believers, he used this particular word walk as a, a way of our conduct or our behavior. And he never uh, used this particular word in a physical manner as walk. So, uh, but there are some things that we have to learn before we can walk out the walk that he uh, was telling us as believers that we are supposed to be walking. And uh, I, I was starting today and it came to me that uh, when we the believers, let me say it like that, when we the believers uh, read the Bible, we must read it for our, our, to get an understanding. And what we uh, 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 want to say to the believers, I'm sorry. No, you, you're good. You're good. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, uh, in, in reading the Bible, we need to read the Bible to get an understanding where we are in the Bible and, and uh, what time that we are living in in the Bible. What does the Bible say to us about the time that we are living in? And this is one of the reasons I believe that our Father led us to the book of Ephesians because the book of Ephesians uh, uh, talks about the believer from the start to the end. And, and in the first chapter of Ephesians, Paul talked about our wealth. The, the writer was explaining to us, uh, you know, what God had done uh, uh, for us and then uh, telling us what we have in Christ. So if we were to go back to the book of Ephesians, the first chapter, and read from the third verse down through the 11th verse, you will see where the writer uh, uh, used this particular word has a have eight times. And this is to indicate something. He's pointing out something, the indicative of God's word. And uh, just to set the track and, and not read everything, but if we were to go back there, you will see where Paul talked about us blessing the Lord who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And he let us know that God have done this according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy before him, be blameless before him in love. Now that is important because again, when we get over there in the word uh, and start talking about the word walk, he's gonna tell you to walk in love. But he let us know that God have predestinated us unto the adoption of sonship children in him uh, according to the good pleasure of his will. And then he let us know how God have made us acceptable in the beloved and, and how he have redeemed us, how we have redemption. And he let us know that we have the forgiveness of sins according to the grace of God. And then he also let us know how God have made the mystery known unto us, that which have been hidden from man that in the dispensation of time, when the fullness of time, how he's going to gather together all those that are in earth and all those that are in heaven. And you know, when we're talking about the dispensation, we're talking about are doing away with indicating that uh, uh, the way we know time now that it is going to change. But as I said, uh, uh, Paul talked to us from the book of Ephesians, and, and I know they're talking about because he wrote to the church of Ephesus and to the faithful that are in Christ Jesus. And he will uh, let us know, amen, what is going to happen at the end. So we had kind of like jumped over to the sixth chapter when he told, when he said, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And Paul said, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand. Now, in, in saying that, Amen. Being able to stand. This is an indication that there is going to come a time, and we believe that we're in that time, where there are going to be some attacks on the church. There are going to be uh, uh, some attacks from the enemy, and, and this is why he's encouraging them 
having done all to stand. And he said, put on the whole arm of God that you will be able to stand. And when he used this particular word, able, able is the power to act or perform or having enough power or skill to perform. So then this is where we are going with this particular teaching. And I'm just kind of like laying the track. I'm not, I'm not teaching now. I'm just kind of la uh, laying the track so the uh, hearers can understand what, where we're going and what we are uh, uh, bringing out to them in the time that we are in now. We are in the latter part of this letter in which Paul uh, uh, wrote to the church and to us that are faithful. And let me just give you some of the definition of staying and then I'll give it over to the apostles so you can understand that. Uh, yes, this is where we are. In, and if we are going to be able to walk the walk in which he requires us to walk out, then first of all, you're going to have to be able to stand. So I say this to the believer because we need some encouragement because there's attacks. Our faith is being tested. There are, are many fiery trials that are, 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 we are experiencing and, and fiery dots are being shot amen, at the believer. And Paul's to take the shield of faith that you may be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked. So listen, the word stand is to be in, in a certain place. And this is why we just quoted unto you from the first chapter to show you that God has seated you in heavenly places in Christ Jesus to show you your place, your position. But it's also mean a rank, amen. In this particular rank that we have is a high rank because he let us know that he made us sit together with Christ in heavenly places. Well, what did the Bible say that Christ seated? He seated far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion. So then that means that if Christ is seated above principality, power, uh, uh, power might, and dominion, so are we. But Paul is saying for us to stand, indicating that there's going to come some things that try to get you out of that position, to get you to operate out of that position. All right. But stand means to take to take or to hold the office, to hold your position, hold that responsibility that, that is indicated. All right. But it is also to keep a certain position or condition. Now, again, if we look at it, at the sixth, sixth chapter of Ephesians, again, you're going to see what Paul not only tell us to stand, but he tell us to have done all to withstand, indicating that you are going to have to hold out against some things. So what we're saying you, you, to the believers, you're going to be in a warfare and the enemy are, are, are going to come against us in many different ways. But Paul saying, stay in place. He's saying, resist destruction. See, stand is to be unchanged. And he is to remain in a certain course or, or a certain direction. And he is to be submitted to trials and tests and ordeals. Other words, these things are going to come against you. But he said, but bear the burnt of these things without retreating. So he said, withstand these things, confront and face this, the thing that you, uh, the enemy are bringing against you. Stand against the enemy fire. But he does not tell us to stand against the enemy fire without telling us how to do it. So therefore, we are going to have to learn how to stand against the, uh, against the enemy. So Paul said it like this. He said, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God he tell us to cast them down. Then he tell us to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. He said, casting down imagination and bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. So he telling us how to do this warfare. So once we, a man, stand up under what the enemy are bringing against us, then we are going to be able to move on because walk means to, to, to go on. It means to go through or to go over. And we know that the enemy are trying to stop us from entering into that promised land. So listen, Paul is saying, fight the good fight of faith. So I'd like to encourage the believers, those who are listening to me right now. Listen, I know that you are going through some things. And, and, and because a lot of our, our Iranians teaching among us, then many times we might even think that it because of certain things that we ourselves have done. But always remember, amen. That, that the Bible, Jesus said, bring, I'm sorry, Paul said, bring every thought to what? The obedience of Christ. It is Christ's obedience, not yours. 
your obedience is your faith in what Christ has done for you, that which God has given unto you. So keep your faith in Jesus Christ. And if you do that, then you will be able to stand against the wires of the devil. Thank you, Apostle. Amen. I say yes and amen. And listen, that is, that is really good. I know that uh, I know that he, he, he kind of cut his teeth on, on Ephesians when he was growing up as a little boy. Little boy, uh, e Ephesians was really gracious, gracious and kind of parented him, parented him and brought him to this place. And so uh, for me, it's so rich. It's just such a rich book. And I, I think uh, Paul had some grand, some grand encounters from God, revelatory speaking. Because particularly as, you know, when you're talking about warfare, right, and, and you're talking about the fact as a believer, uh, when you're talking about warring, uh, and I want to look at something to just kind of, you know, the, the, to talk to somebody about warring a warfare as a believer, right? Hmm. Um, the Bible says, and we think about war, uh, here, uh, when he talks about it here, he's talking about war. You know, when you are a warrior, when you get to be a warrior, it means you have some experience. Of the when, when you get to be a warrior, that means you've had some battles. Uh, when you get to be a warrior, uh, that means you got a secret history with God. Because remember what he says, and the pastor was quoting these passages earlier, out of second, out of, I'm sorry, out of 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse 4, when he says mm -hmm. the weapons, and he's talking about, now there he's telling you about these weapons, how that these weapons, in, in other words, let, let's say from this standpoint, the weapons like us. You know, you remember when David uh, 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 was talking uh, after he had come up and, and, and Saul had, uh, he had come up, and Saul was wanting to assist him in helping him to, 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 to overcome Goliath when Goliath was challenging the army of the Lord. And you remember mm -hmm. after David, after Saul found out we finally got somebody who would go out, found out we finally found out we got somebody who would go out against this, uh, uh, this, uh, this, 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 this warrior against Goliath who would go against this adversary, this enemy. You remember the first thing that, that Saul wanted to offer, offer to, to David to go out Saul grabbed his armor and said, David, That's right. here you go, man. Since you're going to go in the battle, take, take this. Take, take my war. Take my, mm -hmm. take, my, uh, uh, take my weapons. Use mm -hmm. my stuff. And David said, uh-uh, I can't. Sorry, I, I appreciate the gesture. Thank <laughs> you for the kind gesture, but I can't uh -huh. use your armor. And he wanted to offer David to use his armor to go in the battle. Well, here's the issue about warfare. You mm. don't want to go in any fight, any battle, Without you yourself being battle tested, and definitely mm -hmm. you don't want your see your your weaponry has to have the same experience you have. We, the Bible said the Holy Spirit joins like kind with like kind. You will never want to go into a fight without your weapons being tested. You need to think about it. Somebody sell you a car, mm -hmm. and you're talking about driving to California. If you're living in in, in the South, you're living like where we are, we're in Alabama. Man, you don't want to go buy a car or get a car from someone that you bought. I borrow someone's friend's car. He's going to let you use his car. And you haven't taken it. You don't know if the oil's been changed. You don't know if the, all the fluids are up the pond. You don't know if the tires are good. You haven't checked. Man, that thing got to be battle tested. You got to know that certain things about it has been to make that journey. You don't want to take something into a fight, into a battle, and it haven't been proven. So is the man of God talking about you got the purpose of standing is knowing if you can abide in a place, if you can remain in a place, you can be true in a place before you start on the journey. The walk, mm -hmm. the walk is the journey. The walk is where that's you right. can know that what you've acquired from God uh, can stand up against anything that's going to persecute it, going to challenge it. Because remember, the Bible says any man going to live godless. Number one is uh, certain things about living for God, you're going to mm -hmm. suffer persecution. Oh, persecution. Certain things that's going right. to challenge you in your relationship to God. That's why he told you in Ephesians, the sixth verse, sixth chapter, verse 10, the man of God said, finally, my brethren, mm -hmm. be what? Be strong, strong in the Lord. Lord. And in what? In the now, power of his might. Before you can even get to the stand of things about yourself, that has to be, you have to be battle tested. You have to know in terms of the Lord that you're going to be serving. Because remember, you're not going out here in a warfare, in a fight to, to confirm to the enemy how bad you are and what you got going on. Amen, brother. You ain't, you ain't Amen. thinking about testing the adversary, the enemy, about what All your right. stuff and what you got. And too many Amen. people, when they, they get tired of waiting on stuff and they've been believing God, the money is funny, you know, and stuff is just kind of crazy. And, you know, you're trying to pay your bills and you're trying to take care of this. And, 
and you know you want things to look good, and you and sometimes when stuff get crazy, you say, I ain't used to this. You know, I ain't used to this, and money ain't coming in, and you've been laid off, or, or the job you used to have ain't working, and you had to make a decision about where you are, and you thought God, you thought that God was going to make the same decision you made when you made it. You decided to leave this situation, and the money ain't coming in at the same time you made the decision. It seemed like things are on delay, and now you, you, you're trying to figure out what you need to do. Baby girl, God, the kingdom of God don't work like that. I think the man, man of God gave us a word. If you don't mind, give us a definition of that word able one more time. What the word able? Able. Word yeah. Able. <laughs> hey. able. What you say? See, all these things, when the Bible says in Ephesians 6, at the verse 10, my brethren, be what? Mm -hmm. Be strong, strong in the Lord. And what? Yeah. And in the power. Power Listen, of his might. Before you understand, because a lot of times we borrow these terms, we use these terms. I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. And, and, yeah. and, and the Bible says that. But the Bible, where it's speaking from and where you are in your experience with God, may be two different things. And so, w listen, we have to evaluate those things. Particularly when we're talking about a fight. We're talking about warfare. Listen, you got that thing that you got to know about yourself. You got to understand your relationship with God. You have things about him. Because right now, man, I was talking to someone on the, on the earlier today. And I, I was calling them to ask them about some things because I know they had a certain experience. And, man, I called them on that phone and, oh, ooh, oh, my, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for that. Because it was somewhere. They had some things going on. And, and right now, God was the subject. And, man, you know, God, I thought, man, God, this, and, oh, my God, I wasn't ready. Man, I had to regroup, <laughs> bag up, <laughs> because I didn't call them. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. I, I didn't call them for that. But they would just happen to be in a bad spot. They had to be going through some challenges. Stuff wasn't being taken care of. And all of a sudden, what well, they've been taking care of, they were trying to fight their way through. But this thing, listen, what, used, what was in their hands as a responsibility is no longer in their hands as a responsibility. It is a monkey on their back. That thing mm. done shifted out. And so the enemy done, done worked his way around from their hands where they can control things, where they can put things in place, and where they can operate with things. That thing done shifted and got around on the back of their neck. That thing riding the back. And now, hmm. you know, and with that, sometimes in a warfare, if you are not in it being strong where you need to be, guess what? All of a sudden, that thing is strong on you. And the people talk to you, you got a tube. I mean, you you got a bad disposition. You're mean-spirited. You're talking crazy. And, oh, oh my God, which, oh, who is this? Who? What? When? How? <laughs> because you allow, listen, you wasn't strong in the Lord. And you didn't recognize the kind of fight you were in. And you're not even now, you ain't even recognizing your relationship. You ain't even speaking from a relationship. Now you're speaking from mad. You're speaking from, <laughs> listen, you speak, you're speaking from toe up, from the floor up. You're talking from a whole other place. And your relationship with God, that thing, the enemy will snatch that. And y'all remember this, right? The reason the man of God is talking about these things is because here's the issue. No one said, he said, listen, be strong. He said, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in what? In the power of his wow. might. Now, so you and I, for what we got going on, we have to go back and evaluate. These things have to be researched. What mm -hmm. does it mean for you to be strong in the Lord versus mm -hmm. what the Bible is saying? What does it mean for you to be strong in the Lord? How are you going to do that in the situation? What you crisis you got going on? Stuff that go, what does being strong in the Lord mean at this hour? What you looking at? What you seeing taking place? How you feel about what you think about? What does that mean? So you that mean you and the Lord got to, because think about it. Lordship is not a human principle. It's not a human reality. Lordship is a spiritual operation. You remember what he said? Somebody gonna get it right for me, right quick. If you don't mind, First Corinthians, twelfth chapter, beginning. Look, look at that third verse. And Paul was telling them something, because being strong in the who? He didn't tell you to be strong Lord. in Jesus, right? He didn't tell you to be strong in Christ. What did he tell you to do? Be, be strong, strong in the Lord. In the Lord. In the Lord. If you're going to be strong in the Lord, right, that's something you got to understand about lordship that you can't approach that any kind of way. See, lordship is mm -hmm. crucial when it comes to warfare. Because in warfare, mm -hmm. as a believer, the first thing you got to check out, the first thing you have to be able to check at the door. And I use David. Matter of fact, they're going to get these verses for us. Well, I told you all to go. They're going to get First Corinthians 12 for me. And I need... Oh, and I need them, if you don't mind, I just had to make an adjustment. And the volume a little bit low out there. 
And so we're having to jump yeah. on the volume. It's in a, a little, little problem. Yeah, the there you go. Okay. Are we good, Pastor? Yeah. Yeah, you're coming yeah, up a little bit higher force, now. Right? Yes, sir. What? Okay, go give it. Give that definition. See, that word able is power to act or perform or have enough power or skill. And, and therefore, with what you are explaining, uh, Ed, that, that, that was, uh, that was, you know, because a uh, uh, apostle not to cut you off, you know, when you get on, over in this letter, was saying, having done all to stand, you know, he said, put on the whole arm of pattern. God that, yes, sir. Definition okay. a little bit slower. Okay. Uh, it is the power to act or perform, and it's having enough power or skill. So, so he's saying uh, when you go into this warfare and like what you're explaining, he said, like you explained, you make sure that you have enough power, you have enough skill before you uh, go into this warfare. And that's what I was saying. He was saying uh, what what Paul is saying. Uh, 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 having done all to withstand, that means to hold out against. And, he, and, and not only, but he said, but having done all to stand. So I wanted to bring that in so, you know, the hearers can understand what you're explaining very vital to them because we're going into this warfare and have not, don't have the skills to stand up against the enemy. So that's why we're using this particular uh, subject, learn, I mean, learn to stand. So if you learn, you have to be informed. So right now, uh, uh, just even as this teaching now it is showing, uh, uh, teaching the heroes how to do warfare. Remember, uh, Paul said, our, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down a stronghold. And as you are explaining, I just have to believe to understand what you're saying, that we have a responsibility to arm ourselves in going into this warfare but you're not arming yourself based upon your own power or your own strength. Because when he said, be strong in the Lord, he's saying to us, draw your strength from the Lord. And that's why my strength is made perfect in weakness. So we understand our weakness. And so we can learn how to draw strength because we're not going, he's not sending us into this warfare on our own power, our own strength. It is his. So therefore we got, we got to learn uh, how to stay connected with him and, and, and stay connected with what the position in which he has placed and function out of that position. Sorry about cutting you off like that, but go ahead because I, you know, this is so oh, vital to us because we're, we're in this warfare. Team. Yeah. We, yes, sir. You're good. Uh, you just got, you're the tactical squad. I'm giving the strategy yep. and you're getting tactics. Details. It's all good. Let's do it. Yes, sir. Warfare. That's how warfare works. You got to have a strategy. You got to have a strategical mm -hmm. squad who, who are strategic. Strategic, yes. and then you have those who are tactical. So with that, what I want to say, these are things that we're talking about for people because in a season, in a time like this, when people don't understand how to do warfare because what they surmise as warfare, I, I should say, what they surmise as having lack, uh, uh, don't have resources, mm. certain things are not in place, and, and they need a miracle from God, and they'll understand mm. sometimes it's just, it's, it, it is a warfare. It's a warfare sometimes. Mm. And while you're trying to figure mm -hmm. out, and, and then we start blaming God or thinking God don't care, or mm -hmm. God ain't helping, or he, I've been praying mm. and, and ain't nothing happened. Right. And, and and listen, if I'm talking like that, my speech is betraying my position. Mm -hmm. As a soldier, you know, before you went into the battle, you had yeah. the resources. You don't listen, right. So if you can always be able to surmise and be able to equate where you are, if you can understand where you are, you'll know what's needed. Think about this for a moment. Yes. See, Saul mm -hmm. didn't have a clue. Now think about it. He's thinking about David as just a volunteer. David is a he's a good lad. David showed up on the scene and we're just thanking God for David. But but we're gonna help David out. And he should have understood. David has some you ain't got, brother. Mm -hmm. So what you gonna give David? You can't dress David with something you ain't. You can't dress what David got when you don't have what he have. What David got? Mm -hmm. David got courage. He's got confidence. He's got a covenant, and he knows mm -hmm. all three of those things. He knows it. So Saul trying to offer him something from the natural to go That's into it. the spiritual battle. Yes. So he offers him 
his armor. But David says, listen, I don't doubt your armor is great, grand, and awesome. The problem is with armament and warfare, weapon, weaponry, I should say, if it ha you haven't tested it. It's like going out in a, in a battle, somebody done threaten you, you run in the house, and you don't, I think my mama, my mama used to have an old gun, it's in there in the back underneath the bed, and you run, <laughs> run there and get grandma old gun. That thing mm. been under the bed, all got cobwebs, dust, everything <laughs> in it. I mean, that even have no bullets in it. But you run in there, and you're going out there, and you can pull grandma gun out, and the frying pan bad, dust behind the trigger, <laughs> and the thing don't even shoot. Bam, and there you go. You out, down, gone. Man, you can't pull no firearm from some anywhere, somebody laying up. No, that's why they had to clean those weapons. Be familiar with it. Know how to operate it. Listen, you have to learn how to, before you learn how to shoot it, you need to learn the components of it. David was saying to Saul, listen, I ain't got no relationship with this man. I ain't, it hadn't been proven. <laughs> this thing, man, ain't got no history together. I don't know how to work. I don't know how to work if the man ran way back. I don't know what this stuff would do. So you can't do that. So I'm saying to us in these days that things about where we are in time right now, that yes. people have not familiarized themselves with who they are, who the Lord is. And so we're in a time now, and to whom the Lord used to be to you, and what he did do in time gone past, you got to know that and know what he's moving forward. Remember what David said? And we always tell people, if you're going into, going into the warfare, you got to maintain a history. You need a report, a record, a history of battles. You need to be able to evaluate where you've been in other fights to know what God has done in other times so you can know moving forward what he's going to do in the future. David mm -hmm. said, when the, when the lion came out against me, the Lord delivered the lion. Who did? Strong in the who? In the Lord. The David mm -hmm. said, I beat the lion down the last time. When that lion came out against him, see, I beat him down. No, the Lord delivered the lion in my hand. Mm -hmm. And the bear, he had a real working knowledge between standing and walking, he had a real mm -hmm. up-to-date, up, uh, up, up-to-date breast knowledge, information. He stayed with his strategies, understood the tactical, tactical warfare. He understood all those things. The Bible said in Second Corinthians, the passage gets there, quote, timber, be four mm -hmm. verse. He said, mm -hmm. in that four, four verse, the weapons of our of warfare. Bible conflict, warfare. If they're not carnal, that means you got to keep... See, spiritual things, you can't That's lay right. away and lay off from spiritual stuff. You know, mm -hmm. you've been on vacation, sabbatical, and, and, you know, just trying to do some me time and getting away from everything and everybody. Then come back in and just going to pick up from where you left off. Spiritual things don't work that way. The Bible said in Colossians 3 and 1, since you then be, and Pat Menegar shared this earlier, mm -hmm. since you then be risen with Christ, mm -hmm. set your mm -hmm. affection Listen when, you, listen, when you decide to take a break on things, you can never take a vacation away from God. All and right. people go away, and you know, sometimes people go away, well, you know, I, I wasn't on the line today. Well, and, well, did you break? Well, you know, I'm mm. taking a vacation, so I'm just getting a break. Baby, mm. let me tell you something. You can't take no vacation from God. That don't That's even right. exist. That's Are right. I don't care mm -hmm. where you go in the planet, the Bahamas, you can go to Italy, Paris, uh, Dubai, wherever you want to go on the planet. What is it? They went to Dubai. They went to Dubai. They trying to correct me on Dubai. They went to Dubai. <laughs> Listen, you can't. <laughs> you, ain't, you, know, you ain't hearing me. You're not hearing me over here. I got to help somebody. Listen, when you're talking about going away vacationing, you can't do that away from God. It don't exist. Ain't no such thing as a vacation from God. And people get away, you know, well, you know, I take a little break. And you can break, but you can't take now from God. Are you hearing hmm. me? Why is that? Word of the man God's told you. Since you then be risen with Christ, set your affection. Whatever you have plotted, planned, your inflection, how you relate to whatever goes on in your life, David, you gotta always do it from that position. Where you have now mm. the new walk, the new place that you're in, you're in in Christ. You got to always relate and reference from that because remember, the enemy doesn't sleep. Mm, that's right. You know what he said? Matthew, he told us that we was talking about back before in Matthew 13, chapter, the Bible said, so while, while men slept, slept. the enemy mm -hmm. was old.
hairs of your feet. Hair. You That's right. You cannot sleep the adversary, my brothers and sisters. So it means That's that right. you can't never, never let go of God, take a vacation from him. You can take a vacation from stuff you've done, work, and all that, and get away from those things. But when it comes to God, you've got to always give him that place, always give him that time. Amen. Now listen, I will give you these few verses and give you back the past. If you don't mind, I, I gave you a first Corinthians 12, because I was saying, he said, be strong where? In the Lord. Now, here's what I understand. And we use it in first Corinthians 12, chapter verse 3, what it say? Oh, man, they, they sleep. They're sleeping, oh, man. Wherefore, I give you to no, understand. What it say? Wherefore, I give you to understand. Wherefore, I give you to understand. That no man speaking by the spirit of God. That no man speaketh by the spirit of God. Call it Jesus accursed. Call it Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord. And no man can say that Jesus is. But by the Holy Ghost. But how? But by the Holy Ghost. See, lordship, rule, authority. Remember, in order for us to be in that place, Jesus said, if I don't go away, the comfort won't come. Holy Spirit is not coming. But guess mm -hmm. what? If the Holy Spirit don't come, ain't no kingdom, no rule, no divine rule, no authority. You and right. I don't have access to it apart from the Spirit. That's why mm -hmm. Jesus said, unless you be born, John again. 3, mm -hmm. you unless you're born again, unless you be born, you, you can't can see, see the kingdom of God. You can't see what? The kingdom of God. Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Divine rule. Right. You can't see That's right. divine rule. Authority, you can't mm -hmm. see it. A apart from Holy Spirit birthing you, br doing mm -hmm. something in you. The, it's the, it takes the Spirit of God to reveal authority. Because mm -hmm. authority is delegated. Nobody just has authority. That's right. That's why he tells us in Romans 13, chapter, let every soul be subject mm -hmm. unto who? The, the higher power. Because mm -hmm. there are no what? There the are power, no but the power, that but be, the... but those mm -hmm. that are ordained. Mm -hmm. God has ordained. Everybody has to be submitted to God for authority. Everybody has to. That's why you're letting you know you can't have authority. You can't understand lordship. You have no relationship to lordship apart from the spirit revealing his lordship. Nobody has access to that apart from the spirit. Are you hearing me? So he said, mm -hmm. no man can call Jesus Lord, but by, how are you going to do it? But by the Holy Ghost. And we understand what they were dealing with there. We understand those folks, those dumb idols, and we recognize Gentiles and had not really made the transition in their minds. It's best, best a little to talk about. When he talks about that old memory and, and, the, and, and that old life uh, that still residue, still residue there to ring with to renew our man. But he letting them know you can't from a flat foot standpoint understand lordship apart from a revelation by the spirit of God. So when he mm -hmm. says be strong in the who? Mm -hmm. In the mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. The first mm -hmm. thing he's telling you to be strong in the Lord, that means you got to be somewhere in the spirit, in the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, your relationship to him. And then listen, we don't have time to go through. The pastor, he read that early when he's in Ephesians, the fourth chapter. He was telling you one faith, one bet, and telling you mm -hmm. one spirit. Right? We ain't got time to mm -hmm. go through that. But, mm -hmm. but I want to say that, emphasize that. Now, if you don't mind, let me give you the other verse real quick. Where we at? I gave you. What's the other passage? Uh-oh. No, what's the other verse I gave you? Mm, okay. Oh, oh good. He'll bring it up. All right. Now, here's what we're doing. Um, as, as we're trying to share, it, 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 let them understand. And man, that thing, ooh, it's, it's, it's close. Holy Ghost trying to work with me, trying to bring it in. Uh, it's it's going it's to come out in just a moment. But listen, if you don't mind, as, as we're, we're, we're sharing, trying to communicate, uh, notice what he said. When he said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then he says, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to do what? Stand. stand. Where? Against the, wiles Against the wiles of the devil. And notice you, the man of God told you about being able, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's the ability. It's the power. It's the empowerment. It's what you've been That's empowered right. that gives the ability to stand. So the empowerment, remember this, when he says, put on, and then we talked about, was talking about, I know what I told you to go. I told you to go get the passage. With David. I told you to go give me those verses with David in his armament because I want you to look at what Saul was trying to give him. I said, let's go find that passage uh, where David was, was rehearsing. Because one of the things we're trying to get people to understand when it comes to victory, as a matter of fact, if you don't mind, the other verse I want to get was Hebrews 5. So while they're getting ready to find that, what David was rehearsing 
what Saul was trying to give him his armor. And I'm telling you, tell people there's two aspects of who we are. Number one, you have to test yourself. That's, you and I have to be tested. You and I have to go through things. You and I have to be able to evaluate our skill sets, our abilities, our virtues, what we have, what we possess from God in our relationship. That's what a man of God was saying. Remember what he said? Put on the, he said, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the what? In the power what? How do you know when you are strong in the Lord and you're operating in the, in the what? How do you know when you got the vigor, the might, the strength, the strength of who? Of his might. How do you know when it's his might you're operating in it? How do you know when you're doing that? He says, do what? Be strong in the Lord and in the what? And in the power of his might. How do you have, what do we say? How do you have vigor? How do you know when you're standing in dominion, standing in power? How do you know when you're standing in strength? And it's, and it's his strength, his power. How do you know when that's happening? How do you operate in this place? You know that how? Because to do that, the Bible says in Philippians, the second chapter, then he tells us, let this what? This mind be in you. See, his might and his power ain't going to flow through what, Pastor? My mind. That's right. He talks about it all the time. Mm -hmm. It's not going to operate through your mind. Mind. That's why the Bible says, and, and he loves to talk about it, out of Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 2, do what? Mm -hmm. Be not conformed to this mm -hmm. world. Because if you conform mm -hmm. to this world, because remember, the weapons of our warfare are not what? They're not Carnal. conformed. They're, right. what? They're mighty through God. Might. And we have to have God's mind on how to use his weaponry. That's mm -hmm. how you put on his armor. And that's why I was, mm -hmm. are we there? Mm -hmm. David, let's, let's hear this verse. This is why I was trying to go with, over here. Let you know that David had an understanding that he couldn't use Saul's armor. And what I'm emphasizing here is this. A lot of us look at how other people fight things and do stuff and how they do things, how they church do things, and we try to borrow their patterns and borrow, borrow their modules. Sometimes you can do that. But you got to know when you're doing that, God has to reveal to you that you can. Because you have to have a relationship with any weaponment, any weaponry and any armament you're going to use. you got to have a relationship with it. And uh, I'll let, get this back to the pastor and, um, and let, him, let him talk more about those things. But let me give you this verse right quick. Where we are? First starting at, at 1 Samuel 17.37. Right, it's 1 Samuel 17.37. 17.37. It says what? David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he would deliver me out of the hand of, his, out of this Philistine, out of Philistine. And Saul said to David, go, and the Lord will be thee, with, will be with thee, excuse me. Yes. And Saul armed David, David with his armor, and he put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with the coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his army, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved thee. You see and what I'm saying? Now. Now David put it. David, you can look. You can imagine David got a got a helmet. I put a helmet on. He got a sword in his hand. He all dressed. He's sharp. Mm -hmm. David sharp. He looked like a warrior, but David mm -hmm. knew, David knew better. Because here's what happens. Sometimes after we get certain victories, we get certain places in God. All of a sudden, well, we can take it from here. But David, after David start walking with that stuff, start feeling that outfit, that helmet on his neck, probably start with start getting a little weak. Mm -hmm. That helmet start weighing his neck down. Oh, man, this thing, this is not going to work. Are you hearing me? And I'm telling you about where we are in time. And that's what man, man of God started off telling us. Being aware of where we are in time. Man, you cannot afford to be trying to fake it till you make it, trying to do what other people do in, in your kind of situations. Man, David knew he couldn't wear dogs so all. He ain't going to be able to take that in the ballot. He may look sharp. He may take a, do a photo op. You may go to get a gallery, get a, get a, you know, get a photo shop and uh, what we call them, what we call them pictures when you go on to get them, you really decked out and shop, what we call them, pictures when we really shop and they, they take those pictures, I forgot what we call it. I ain't got no help this day, let's do it. Let's move <laughs> on. Move right along. But remember what David did. He rehearsed, and I'm telling you, you have to have a record of your past victories. You need those for your future battles. Right now, we tell, I had to do that this morning. 
When I was talking to the lady, lady she started telling me about my man, I got this, and I got this, and I'm, man, I'm, and I'm tired of this. I'm tired of carrying that burden. I'm tired of this, and God just need to come get me. I'm, I'm this. And I get it. She was somewhere. She was somewhere. But she lost sight on where she had been. She lost sight of who God had was. Like it wasn't relevant for where you are right now. Here's the issue. So I started going back. I said, man, don't you remember the name? I said, the house I Well, I did not do that. <laughs> but anyway, I started rehearsing and taking them back over things that God had done in the past. Miracles they had seen. Victories that had been wrought. I took them back down memory lane and brought them up to the present day. And I started, then I took my own testimony. And I took them where I was. I said, listen, you, you ain't mad. You ain't mad with God. Let me show you what mad with God is. I can show you what mad with Man, I was a fool. As I'm telling you, you, you don't know, I know. I've been there, but I can tell you. When them doctors told me, I use my son's example. When that happened to him, when that, when that, when that bullet went through his eye and came out of the top of his head, and they said he's going to have brain, brain damage for the rest of his life. And when, when them doctors reported that to me and told me, uh, all the stuff they told me, and I went down that hallway, man, I called God, said, listen, you come on down here. When I told him to come on, we can get it. We're going to get home. <laughs> you, know, you know I was crazy as a bitch, bro. <laughs> listen. But when them doctors called me, sent for me down there, I was down in the stairway or UAB hospital beating the walls and trying to get God to come down there, come down there with me so we can get it on. <laughs> and, but then when they sent for me up there, and they said to me, they said, uh, sir, they said, daddy, we've done all we need. We have done all we know to do. And when they say it to me, he's in God's hands now. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, jeez. I done messed up. <laughs> you know. Man, I, I, stro I stretched out on that floor. I, I cried. Man, you know, I, I, listen. God, you know I'm crazy. <laughs> you know I had lost my mind. Listen, you know I had... Maybe I had to bag that thing across here. I bag that thing up. You know, somebody said, bag that thing. I had to bag that. Listen, I'm telling you. And so I start rehearsing. I said, listen, let me tell you something. I got crazy too. I start trying to talk to God like he, like, you know, he a left foot soldier or something. Man, I start talking crazy until I realize, even I don't care how crazy it is, I don't care where you are in your stuff, I don't care what's going on, if they repossessing your house, your car, they re repossessing your clothes, I'm saying whatever they take it from you, and I don't care what you think God is, I don't care how you think God position, this is what you need to know, you're going to need him again. I don't care how, how bad it looks, I don't care what you think about God right now, what you need to know, you're going to need him again. So I'm telling you right now, if you don't have to bag that thing back up and rewind that thing and get it back straight, don't, go, don't get crazy on him. It may, he may not be doing whatever you think you need him to do. I don't care what he ain't doing. Don't get crazy on him. Bag that train up. Go back to the station. Start at 11. Let me say, Lord, I know I, I was starting feeling some kind of way about this, but let me, start, <laughs> let, me, let me start this thing all over again. I know I'm feeling some kind of way about it, but I know you better than that and you're bigger than that. I, I'm just having a moment right now. That's all. I may be having a personal sum or a personal winner or something. I may be something, but let me back this thing up because you're better than that. And I'm telling you, you're going to need him again. And all the enemy is doing what you got going on like he did with Job. He, remember what he told God he's going to do? I'm going to make him curse you to your face. And right now, some of you, for what you got going on, and right now, how bad do you think it is? And what you ain't got and what you're lacking is Christmas holidays and I ain't got nothing to buy for my babies and, and I ain't got that and my car done, done broke down and somebody hit me in the back and the car won't run and won't try to crank it up and all that stuff in a holiday season. I'm telling you, what you need to know, the enemy is telling God because he's an accuser of the brethren. He's telling him, I'm going to make her curse you to your face. Are you hearing Listen, don't play that. Don't fall for the okie doke. The man of God already told you, since you, you've been risen with Christ, man. Don't take your conversation. Don't take your relationship back. Don't take your conversation back. I'm sorry, Pastor. You got it. <laughs> Did you want me? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, man. Wow. I apologize. <laughs> About what? <laughs> uh, no, no. Um. We, bet. we we just believe all of all of it is, is, is necessary because we we actually don't know what is going on in many people's lives in whom are listening to you. You might know some people 
that are listening, but God know what is going on in people's lives. And uh, I will listen at you again as you were using David and in, in with the subject in which we are discussing. And I, I said from the outset that we have to know where we are at in time. And in, in knowing where we are at in time, then the Bible tell us how to deal with certain things in our time. And therefore, it is very necessary uh, uh, to see what the Bible tell us to do concerning warfare as we are talking about. And I know that you are using David with De uh, uh, Goliath. And I was telling the church this past Sunday, a lot of times, uh, uh, you know, we, we could go back and talk about Joe. We go back and talk about Moses. We talk about the people in the old covenant. And we talk about what, how, how, you know, they did warfare, so to speak. But the question is, how does that help me? So I will ask the question tonight, and what you just explained concerning David and Goliath, which uh, that was in David's time, how does that affect me? Uh, why is this written in the Bible? Why am I reading this? And why is the apostle talking to me about David and Goliath uh, over thousand or years ago in, in the time that I am in now? But this is written for us to understand. Anytime we are reading the word, we have to always get an understanding, know what the writer is uh, uh, suggesting to us, and know the spiritual significance. Because if you go back there and look at David, uh, it's a very good illustration of what we are teaching the believers now how to do warfare. You'll notice something about David, how David talked about his Lord. He was not going against Goliath. Uh, uh, with a, a, a man's armor. And we're talking about putting on the armor of God here. Yeah. Well, David refused to put on man armor. But look what David said. I'm coming to you, uh, coming against you in the name of the Lord. And you notice something that David picked up him five smooth stones. And this five represent grace. So David is saying, I'm coming to you, not under my power, but the grace of God. Well, then we are living under by the grace of God. Well, what is the grace of God? It is God empowerment, God empowering us to do this warfare. And this is what Paul is saying. Draw your strength from your union with God. And that's why he first of all, he explained to the church their union with God, you know, uh, 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 their place with God, their position in God. So now you are connected with him. So draw your strength from him. So David had much confidence that, that he was going to be able to defeat, uh, defeat Goliath. He didn't go in this battle uh, uh, afraid. He didn't go in looking to lose. And this is what we are saying to the believers, amen. I don't care what is going on in your life. You should never look to lose because God always calls us to triumph in Christ Jesus. But here what we have to understand as well is that God giveth us the victory. He give us Jesus victory. Well, how is he giving me Jesus victory? Well, whatever is coming against me, Jesus have already defeated this thing. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. So he, so God has given us his victory and made us more than conquerors through him. So this is what the lesson is about, see? See, because the enemy going to always try to get you to, to depend on you. And this is why Paul said, be strong in the Lord. The devil trick is to make us look at us and look at our ability and look at what we can do and, 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 and even look at our fear, our shortcomings and, and making us blame God, as you was explaining earlier. But, but we are supposed to be dependent totally on God, because when you look at, at the New Testament, when Paul talked about this warfare, you use a, a, a second Corinthians 10 and you use Ephesians 6. Uh, these are the two passages, amen, that give you detail how to do warfare, letting you know who your enemy are. But but even in doing this, he letting you know how to go against this enemy because you cannot defeat no devil under your own power. He letting you know that your struggle is not with flesh and blood. He letting you know what your struggle is with. But before he told you that you are struggling against principalities and powers and, 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 and spiritual wickedness in high praise rulers or doctors of this world, these, these principalities, he let you know that God have already raised you above them. 
He letting you know that you already you have power over these things. But just because he's telling you that you have power over these things, you don't know how to operate in this power. So we are learning how to operate in this power. So Paul is saying, although we exist in the flesh, we are living in the in the body. He said we do not war after the flesh. So he let us know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down a stronghold, pulling down uh, 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 the stronghold. What are strongholds? Strongholds are strong defense that are built up against an enemy. So what is he saying? He's he writing these letters to to the believers, and because as I have said earlier, a lot of uh, uh, erroneous teaching that have been taught. There's a lot of things in our mind that we will, that we won't be able to go against the enemy. Why? Because Jude said it like this. He said, men crept in the church and turned the grace of God to lascivity. So our mind have been, been uh, uh, developed in thinking from an external perspective and not spiritual. So then Paul tells us, to be spiritual minded. Don't be corner minded because if we are natural minded, we can't receive the things of God. So then what we are saying is, is that there have to be some teaching uh, concerning the new creation whereas that it will cause us to behold the glory of Christ. Look at who we are in Christ. See, and if we look at who we are in Christ, and get our mind renewed with that, then our thoughts are different how we deal with things because what's going to happen? We're going to realize that there is a power in us that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Where is this power? This power is in us. So I need to know how to release this power. I need to know how to set it in motion. So that comes through teaching. But it never come through teaching and causing people to look at themselves. It's always causing us to behold the glory of Christ. And when that happens, then this is when we are going to be changed into his image from glory to glory by his spirit, by us beholding his glory. Because the Bible says, this is our confidence in the day of judgment. For as he is, so are we in this world. So then, we want to encourage the hearers, the believers. Amen. Uh, uh, don't don't allow no one to make you to look at yourself again. You you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're not the righteousness of God by what you do or don't do. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and you need to begin to see yourself the way God see you. And how do God see you? He see you just like he see his son, Jesus Christ, because you are in Christ. And if you can begin to see yourself the way God see you, I want to tell you, amen, you are, you, you have authority. You, you are a king, amen, and you can possess some territory. You can take back that which the enemy has stole from you. And God has given you the authority and power to take back what the enemy has stolen from you, amen. God bless you. Back to the grill. Amen. Well, listen, on that note, as, 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 which is one of the reasons that we're at this hour, this season, this time, you know, I, I, think, um, I, I think I heard just listening to you from, from your Sunday message. And um, because of the hour that we're living in and because of the time where, where, we, where we are, find ourselves situated. If you don't mind, I'm going to look at Hebrews, the fifth chapter, for a moment. Can we look at Hebrews 5? In okay. Hebrews, fifth chapter, right? We're there. Somebody got it? And listen, one of the things we try to let people understand, right? Anytime we're, we're carrying a weight, you're carrying a load, you're carrying a burden, and you're taxed, uh, Jesus said, listen, come unto me all you who labor, and I heavy laden. When you're mm -hmm. in a battle, you're in a war, you're, you're heavy laden, you're, 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 you're burdened, you're weighted down. It, in, a, in a place like that, you've got to reaffirm the relationship. That's why he was mm -hmm. talking about stand versus walking. You're not in a mm -hmm. position to advance when you are tremendously challenged. When you're tremendously right. challenged, you're already under load, you're already under duress, um, you, you, your ship is strained, you're in a challenged place, you've got to refresh. The Bible tells us in Acts, these are the times of refreshing, right? That comes from the presence of the Lord. 
You, you have to renew. You have to re-energize. Um, the Bible tells us when you read in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, uh, in order, listen, we're in a time right now, right, uh, in that fifth chapter. But what I want to do, I, I gave you Hebrews 5, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But right here, I just want to talk to people because there may be folks that are weighted down, people that are burdened, folks that are uh, carrying a load right now. And, and you're trying to work your way through. Some heavy folk out there, some people really going through, some people uh, that haven't figured it out yet. And they, they haven't, and they haven't gotten a word from the Lord. I'm going to know that when we get to where we're challenged and, and we haven't figured things out, we don't quite know the direction, we don't know where we need to be going. Uh, going it, 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 when we get in places like that, it, it's, it's difficult to hear from the Lord. You know, when you're in a place like that where you're disgusted, you, you, you're aggravated, agitated, frustrated, it's difficult sometimes for people to hear from the Lord. And so then, because that's the first thing you have to say, well, listen, what the Lord is saying? Well, I ain't hearing from the Lord right now. He ain't talking to me. You know, you know, we may not be talking to each other. I don't know. But right now, I, <laughs> I ain't hearing, hearing you. But listen, my brother, so keep this in your mind. Keep this in your mind. You, the Bible said no soldier ever go warfare at his own joint. Keep, sure. I don't care how the fight gets. I don't care how overwhelming it seems. Keep it in your mind. Mm. When the man of God said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The Lord would never tell you to be strong in something if it wasn't available. That's right. The, That's issues, right. the enemy's job with, with you is to try to separate you from your resource. Mm -hmm. That's right. He's trying to separate you from your resource mm -hmm. so you would be thinking ill of your source. Mm -hmm. You got to always maintain that even if the resource uh, seem to be lacking, seem mm -hmm. to be short, keep this in your mind. I don't care where the resource went. Know that the source promised to never leave you. All right. If, even if your resources are lacking, things are not in place, in pocket, like you think you need them, keep in your mind. The one who is the source of the resource promised mm -hmm. never to leave. And that's so right. even this, and I would tell people, there's a way to understand when you don't understand, and there's a way mm. to know when you don't know. Because the yes. issue is not about the things that you think you need to have in hand. The thing is not about the assets and the resources. It's about the source. Because if you keep the source intact, and even if the resource is limited, the man who in the beginning was the Word, John <laughs> 1 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word uh -huh. was with God, and the uh -huh. Word was God, and the what? And the same was in the beginning. We're gone. Mm -hmm. So anytime the resource seemed lacking, God through his word is still the creator of everything that began. Anything that needs to begin, God can always start a fire. I say he can mm -hmm. always ignite a fire. He can always mm -hmm. ignite resources. Resources is the last thing God's concerned about in your life. You need to hear me Amen. every day. I say Amen. resources is the last thing God's concerned about in your life. That's why Matthew 6, 33 says, seek first. If you can keep the source in its proper place, if you can keep mm -hmm. the main thing, the main thing, then, uh, listen, then, uh, listen, then the other things you need, what he mm -hmm. say? Seek first the kingdom bad. of God and his what? Mm -hmm. And his righteousness. And what happens? Mm -hmm. The resources all coming. These things Baby, listen, bad. the devil can't keep you from the resources. They coming. Mm -hmm. And listen, and we can use Job as an example. You remember seven boys and the three girls and the she asses and, and, and the camels and, and all his cattle, the livestock, everything he had was taken. And the Bible said he got all the way down to flesh falling from his bones. And you said, man, it took all the man resources. Well, that was the point. S Satan said, if I touch all his resources, I will make him curse you to your face. Because the Job ain't serving you for nothing. Don't, don't get it twisted up in here. Job is serving you for something. Job got all, see, Satan can see past all that. Satan saw that all this stuff Job, Job got, and God had them blessed him with all this stuff. That's the reason that hedge is out there. Job thought, Satan, things in his mind, he's thinking that hedge is out there to protect all this stuff he got from God. He got from God. And that's why God, that's why Job is so happy and sacrificing for his children, and killing fatted calves and making sacrifices and the pigeons and the turtle doves and the, she, and the heifers and the, and the calves and the lambs and he's sacrificing for everybody. He's doing that because that boy living where? He living large. 
And because he's living large, he's a big shot call up in here. But we ain't doing that. That hedge is out there around that stuff. He know you got that stuff hedged in. But I promise you, if I move that, if you let, listen, if you let me take that stuff, he going to curse you to your face. Listen, don't let the devil play no games with your mind. See, he tried that same trick, but he, but he learned, he was a little bit, he was a little bit more learned when he came to Jesus and looked forward. <laughs> See, he didn't come after the stuff from Jesus, right? He learned something. And I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters out here, and, and listen, I ain't going to get you brother out here, but I'll tell you something. The enemy tries to separate you from God by to force you to think it's about what you are lacking. It's about what God hadn't come through on yet. He tried to make it be about the resources. It ain't about the resources, my brothers and sisters. God used Job to reveal that. That's why when in Luke, the fourth chapter, when he comes against Jesus on that, uh, Jesus led by the, by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, there as he, they're tempted of the devil while he's there, he's tempted. And the Bible says, he says, Satan said, well, if you be the son of God, do what? Turn these stones to bread. Try to, if he's trying to make it be like as if it's about the resources. It ain't about the resources, but he's trying to come clean. Because Jesus is doing what pastor, pastor tells us. He stood and withstood. And because Jesus was standing, he said, listen, let me, let me get on down to it. <laughs> I'll give you all the kings of the world and the glory of them if you do what? See, now he's not trying to take things from Jesus. He's not trying to take from him. He's offering him something. See, he, was take, he took Job's stuff from him. Son, seven boys, three girls. All his cattle, all his livestock, his position in, in the community, all that he lost all that. Took that. But Jesus, he came bearing gifts. He wasn't playing that one no more. That didn't work. Because he found out something about Job that Job had going on with God. So now he's regrouping on his strategy. So now listen, we're gonna come in bearing gifts. I'm gonna give you all the kingdoms and the glory. I know this is why this, I know this is why you came. I'm, I'm gonna let you have this. I'm gonna give it back. If you just are you hearing me? So he revealed to us what he learned from Job. Because when he took all the stuff from Job that he was trying to convince, I'm going to make him curse you to your face. Because that's the reason you're serving you. No, no, but he found out in the, in, in the end game, in the final analysis, he found out it was his relationship with God. He found out it was worship. The Bible said Job spread out and, and back, got down on his face before God. He began to worship. And he realized, baby, don't worry about the resource. It's about maintaining your worship. Maintain your attitude. Maintain your place in God. Maintain your praise. Don't let him take that. And he got down to that in Luke 4 when he says to Jesus, yeah, I give you the kings of the world and the glory because he made it really attractive. He really, baby, he, listen, he played the race card. He played the card right there. Baby, he said, I give you all. I know this why you came because the Bible says he came to seek and to say not them, but that that was lost. He came back. They, the devil knew he came for the kingdoms. He knew he came back for rule and divine authority. He just didn't know how he came for it. He said, um, listen, you remember what David said? He offered them the kingdoms of the world and the glory. But David said, guess what? I will not give the Lord that. It's cost me nothing. So Jesus falling for the okie doke. You ain't finna give me this. Bro, just, just hold on in. Now I'm going to get them. I'm going to take them. But I'm going to make you look bad and embarrass you while doing it. My pastor. And get to Hebrew five is okay. He's a Hebrew five, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I said I didn't get that, so it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead with Hebrew five. Hebrew I'll, I'll, five. Well, look at Hebrew. let's go there. You know, man, real quick. That clock is long way away. Can hardly see it. All right, we got it. I see it now. If you know, man. All right, if you know, man. Look, Hebrews 5th chapter, because what we're talking about, trying to get people prepared. Because what people don't understand, when it comes to warfare, when it comes to war, you don't take anybody. You don't take anybody to war. Are you hearing me? And if you notice when, in Matthew 25, we don't have time to go there. Are you hearing me? The Bible says he gave one, five, one, two, and one, and one, one. Why do you think he gave the one, one? Versus the one, the one he gave two and the one he gave five. There's a reason that he gave the one one. See, God is never, and notice what he said in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. God is never going to submit you to a fight to a level of warfare that you cannot 
protect or cover yourself in. So he does not send babes. Paul said, I could not speak unto you as a, why Paul couldn't speak as unto them spiritual? Because he had gave them weighted, weighted wisdom, weighted insight. Remember about how we, how be it we speak wisdom, First Corinthians, second chapter, how be it we speak wisdom among those who are what? Mature, of age, of perfect, complete, of, of age, mature, of come of age. You speak with, you don't, listen, you don't put certain heavy weight on babe. People can't protect themselves, can't cover it, can't protect it. So he didn't want to give man five talents. He can only cover, cover the grace. He only got grace for one. I wouldn't give you two if you can't protect one. He knew in giving him one, he was going to, what was he going to do with the one? He couldn't protect, he couldn't cover him. God is not going to induce you into a fight, into a warfare with an adversary. That's why 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, there's no temptation taken you, but what? Such is common to man. And God is what? Faith. Lift you to the blood of Jesus. Now, so I'm, I'm saying this to say that this, because he's talking about warfare, talking about strongholds, talking about these things, why the weapons of our warfare are not coming, why they're mighty through what? Through God. And you're talking about our position, what we have to be when it comes to it. He, Hebrews 5th chapter, got it? Verse 5, verse 12 says what? You got it, Pastor? For when yes, sir. Oh, uh, okay. You said verse when 12. For time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be first principles of the oracles of now, God. Now, now, that's the time. You was talking about this earlier. You got to be a very aware of where you are and what you're dealing with. Because you got to understand, this word is alive. This word is living. This word will get you into some things. It'll get you into some fights, some battles, some challenges. And you better know, listen, you better, listen, you better understand what it takes to be, be, be using this and quoting scriptures all over the place. And I mean, tell me how, you know, I can, I can do all things. To, baby, you, and you said you better be ready to do it. You said you can do all things. You better be ready to be able to go there. Because the enemy is going to take you. The Bible says in Mark, the fifth, fourth chapter, verse 14, the sword sold the word. And what happened? Satan comes to meet you. So whatever, you got to know when the Lord is dealing with you, working with you, you have to be prepared. Now notice what it says in that 12th verse. One more time. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers. For when for the time, you what? Ye ought, ought to, to be, be teachers. teachers. Whatever. Ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. All right, now notice, talking warfare here. Talking about protecting yourself, protecting your relationship, protecting your family. What did he say about it? For everyone that uses milk. Everyone that useth milk. Is, is unskillful in the word the of word righteousness. The word unskillful. See, you, you have to have relationships. What I was telling you about when David was rehearsing. He, being strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. What well, you got to be. Listen, using milk, you don't have skill when it comes to the word of righteousness. Talk to us, Pastor. No. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, 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 in, in, in using this particular tech, you know, in, in, and I was, I was looking at this and, and uh, you know, I, I was looking at uh, uh, the never verse where Paul was talking about them being dull of hearing. And, and they're going to go back to it. Verse 11? Yes, sir. Okay, let's do it. And remember, we, we are talking about learn. That, you know, that's our subject, learn to stand. And, and, and noted that Paul was talking about them being dull of hearing. Therefore, you got to be taught. But when you talk about dull, you're talking about not sharp. You, you, you're talking about slow to understand. Remember, we started off uh, even in this teaching tonight about, you know, the Bible telling us above all I get and get an understanding. Yes. And when we talk about understanding, understanding is simply saying that you have a thorough grasp of both facts and meaning and seeing clearly and fully not only the nature of an idea, but also its implications. So, so when you're talking about implication, you're talking about what is the writer implying or uh, 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 what is he suggesting to me out of all the teaching, out of all that you said, uh, 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 do I understand what, what, what is the uh, uh, preacher is suggesting to me? How, uh, what he's saying, how does it involve me? See, a, a lot of time we're teaching people certain things, even out of the Bible, just because it's in the Bible, but it does not involve them. There's some things 
that is in this Bible that are written for us, but not written to us. So what we have to do is, is that we have to understand what is written to me, because the thing that are written for me is written for my learning. It, do, it does not mean that, uh, uh, you know, for an example, like we talk about the, the Mosaic law it, uh, uh, is written, but that thing that is in that law is not written to us, but it's written for us. So what am I learning from it? See, so Paul is saying that, excuse me, that are the people that in which he he's talking to here in, in, in the book of Hebrew here, the people were a people uh, uh, that did not and not learn concerning the Mosaic law. This was a generation that that did, had gotten away from God and did not know all uh, uh, concerning their for for parents. And this is why we will see many times that Paul went back in, in, in the old covenant and brought whole chapter, like for example, like the 13th chapter, all what God had promised them in, uh, in the book of Jeremiah to familiarize them with righteousness. See, because he, uh, uh, the scripture let us know that, that uh, God promised that we should be established in his righteousness. And you have quoted uh, uh, several times tonight what Jesus said, first seek you the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So so then, uh, if, if you continue in this text, what you are doing right here, notice what Paul said in the latter part. He said uh, uh, about milk. See, milk is, is, is just simply the principle. It's, it, it, we think sometimes when he say you have need of, uh, uh, I fed you with milk, that he's speaking negative. But that's not a negative term when you look it up in the Greek. Uh, what that word is simply saying that you have not matured in it. And he's talking about foundation. He's talking about basic thing because when he's talking about the principle, a principle is a basic truth. Uh, it is a principle belief and it's a rule of conduct. So he's saying that, that you have not gotten the first principle yet. But he said meat belongs to those who have uh, uh, what? Belong to them that are full age. They have matured. And, 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 and by reason, use and having their, notice what he say, their senses trained, exercise. This word exercise means trained to know good and evil. So now he's talking about the man being complete. He's not just speaking synecdoche. He's just not speaking about the man spiritually, because spiritually, uh, 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 you are who God has created you to be. But this, as Paul, as, as we quoted in 2 Corinthians 10, Paul said, uh, even though we are existing in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Why? Because it's a spiritual warfare. But what we are existing at, we are seeing these things in manifestation out here in the natural. Yeah. So therefore, you got to deal with it uh, as a, a full grown man, because the devil is attacking your body. Remember how Paul said, Every time I will do good, I find another law warring in my members, talking about my body. And what is it doing? It's warring against my mind. Why is it warring against my mind? Because with my mind, I serve the law of God. With my mind, I'm useful to God. Because that which God has created in me, the good works in which God has created in me, and when I say in me, I'm talking about the believer, these work cannot be manifested out without my mind being in agreement with my spirit so that my mind will let what God can put in my spirit flow out. And this is why Jesus in his earthly walk said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. But now when a river flows, if it's going to flow into another body, it have to have an outlet. So then what does Paul say then? Paul say, it is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. What is that, Paul? He said, with the heart man believe it unto righteousness. Now remember, he's talking about being skillful in righteousness. So the Bible let us know that God had made Jesus to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we may be made what? The righteousness of God. So now, as he's promised in Isaiah, he said, we shall be established in his righteousness. And when you get established in God's righteousness, God said then that there is no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you and condemns he said, you shall condemn. Yeah. See, so, so now when I understand my right standing with God, 
Now the devil can't make me look at myself and make me condemn myself about my failure because it's not about my failure. It's about Jesus Christ. Because in the flesh, you are going to fail. You're going to come short. So if the devil can keep us in the flesh now, it's like a ball game, uh, Apostle, and you know how a uh, ball game is. You know, if, if Alabama playing Tennessee, then uh, if Alabama playing Tennessee here in Tuscaloosa, that means Alabama got a uh, uh, home court advantage, home, home field advantage, right? See, that means that Alabama know every little crack on their field. Tennessee coming on a strange play because, you know, uh, uh, this is Alabama field. So Alabama have an uh, advantage of them. What are you saying, Alvin Garrett? I'm saying this. If the devil can get you to walk in the flesh, you only, you, he got home field advantage. <laughs> He's going to whip you. So Paul said, walk in the spirit. So if you walk in the spirit, now you got the devil on your territory, now on your court. Now you're going to whip him. But try to get the devil to, in the spirit now. Start talking to the devil about who you are in Christ and see how long he'll hang around. Start talking to him about the authority that Jesus has given you over him and you begin and you have power to catch him out and see how long he's going to hang around. But if he keep you out in the flesh and you think that you can fast and, and do all of this against him, he wait for you to come out that fast. Now, can you handle him like Jesus handled him in the wilderness when he came out to fast? What did Jesus say when, when the devil tempted him? It is written. So have we been obedient like Paul said? Take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Can we tell the devil what is written? So we don't know what is written concerning us. If we don't know our inheritance, if we don't know our position, then the devil can easily pull us over in the flesh and get us to begin the war after the flesh. And that's why we're seeing uh, Christian people fighting one another because someone talk about them because they don't like somebody. And there's a lot of hatred and envy and strife among us because we are operating from the flesh. But if we walk in the spirit, then we as, as dear children in obedience, according to Ephesians 5 and 2, he tell us to walk in love. We will be conducting our lives in love. And I tell you, when you walk in love, you will not be defeated. You will always win. Love always wins. So then let us walk in love toward one another. Now, we can't say that we can't do it because the Bible says that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which he has given unto us. So God is not asking us to love folks uh, uh, with our own love. Yes. Amen. He will put his love in us because if we were to love people with our own love, it's hard to love somebody that is stabbing you in your back. It's hard to love somebody when you know that they are misusing you. You, it's hard to love people that you know that is lying on you with your own love. But with the love of God, you can do it. Amen. So I'm, I digress and I thank you for this opportunity again, Apostle Greer. Thank you. God bless you, my brother. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Well, listen, we've come to that place where I'm asking that any of you that are out there while every head is bowed, every eye is closed. I want to talk to those of you that have never asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come in your life. And it's maybe to address some of the issues, some of where you are, some of the things that are going on. And I want, I want to urge you, irrespective of where you are, one thing you don't ever want to give up, and that's the Lord. Man, I will let go anything, anything, and give up anything. But the one somebody can't go. I mean, I love my family. God knows my children, my wife, and everybody that's connected, tied to me. But anything can go before Jesus. Before the Lord does. And you have to maintain that you're going to. You can't let situations and circumstances and things start separating you out from how you feel about God because of what's happening. One thing you keep in your mind. One thing God is going to do. He, I don't care what, whatever happened. Let, God will never be less than who he is. I don't care what's going on in your life. He'll always be God. He'll never cease to be that. In no given moment. He's going to always be God. And you can always count on it, irrespective of you, know, you don't understand it. So I want to encourage you. If you've never asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come in your life, I want to give you an opportunity to do that right now. And I want you to agree with me while these heads are bowed. I want you to repeat after me. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I repent. Forgive me, a sinner. I'm asking you tonight. I've heard your teaching tonight. I've heard the word. 
And I'm asking you because I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that he was buried and he was raised up and resurrected on the third day. I believe that God the Father raised him from the dead for my justification. I believe with all of my heart. And so, Father, I confess that with my mouth. And I'm asking you now, come into my heart. Fill me to overflowing. I'm asking, I want your spirit to live on the inside of me. I ask it in faith. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in my I pray. Every heart said, amen. Listen, if you pray that prayer with me, I know right now, the spirit of God right now is hovering here. And a miracle of God is taking place. So, Father, I'm asking you, they made that confession. They believe with us tonight. I believe Holy Spirit, in the name of your Son, is causing a miracle to take place by virtue of that confession, believing with all their heart, God, that Jesus died for their sins and was raised up from the dead by God the Father. And I'm asking you now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, we bless you, we believe you now that the Holy Spirit is causing a miracle of God to take place. And they're coming into the kingdom of God. Somebody give the Lord a shout because he's worthy. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, we thank God for you. We're giving God praise for every single one of you if you prayed that prayer with me. And listen, we got numbers on the screen that you can call. We need to assist you further because we always urge people, listen, while it's fresh, while it's new, let's try to uh, find you a good church, get your, get your good Bible. If we can assist you with any of that, the numbers on the screen, you can call and we'll help you and help uh, get you with that next step. So listen, I just want to encourage you today. Amen. Listen, also, if the broadcast has been a blessing, I'm going to urge every single one of you tonight, I'm going to encourage you, if the broadcast has been a blessing, on that screen is out there, give and find. Also on that screen is the church's cash app address. It's dollar sign, C-O-G-G-W-C-I. It's dollar sign, C-O-G-G-W-C-I-2. And that reminds me of something. And so, and, and then on the address is C-O-G-G, 600 Tuscaloosa Avenue, Southwest, Birmingham, Alabama, 35211. I want to encourage you. you. Listen, you can always bring it back, mail it, and I, and I know that God's going to meet you at that place. And listen, and I also want to say thank God for Pastor Gary because uh, the teaching that, uh, that you, you heard me starting off with, I got a chance to, I don't know if I had told you, but I did get a chance to go and, and listen to Sunday morning. Man, you weren't teaching Sunday morning. You were preaching. <laughs> preaching and, and straightening folks out. I heard you straightening them out. Getting them <laughs> Man, you must have been, it must have hurt, was hurting so good because they were saying, amen, amen. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor. <laughs> that, listen, break it down, Pastor. It was, I said, oh, man, he, they get a whooping. They get a whooping today. <laughs> Ooh, you was cutting up, man. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> but listen, I want to urge you to obey. It's on the screen. I encourage you to do that. Pastor, if you don't mind, tell them where they can. Uh, get get that teaching that you've been doing. You can tell them the title again and uh, tell them uh, what you got going on. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm positive. Thank you. Uh, I want everybody to know that, uh, as he's saying, uh, all of our teaching is recorded and, and we record on CD. And if uh, you are listening, you would like to follow us in this teaching, even in which we are doing tonight on Learn to Stand to Walk then we are recording this in, in their own CD. And if you'd like to have the CD and follow us in this teaching, you can call me at 205-799-6690. That's 205-799-6690. And we'll be glad to get the CDs to you. And uh, there's no cost for the CD. But also, if you uh, just pull us up, you can watch us on Facebook or just pull up Alvin Gary Sr., on Facebook, and you'll be able to also to follow us uh, each Thursday night and Sunday morning in our teachings. Uh, hopefully, that you do so. And if you're in this area in Tuscaloosa on Sunday mornings and uh, Thursday night and like to come and watch with us, we're located at 3518 Loop Road, at 3518 Loop Road here in the city of Tuscaloosa. So, our Sunday morning service is at 11 o'clock, and our Thursday night service is 7 o'clock p.m. So if you're in this area and you'd like to come and, and enjoy the Word of God, come and be with us at 3518 Road here in Tuscaloosa. God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye. Amen. Well, listen, I want to urge you to do that. Please do that. It's going to be a blessing to you. We got some, I thank God for some of our leaders out there. They've already been calling to try to get some of those, uh, some of the teachings because he makes the right. available. And uh, like I said, one day, one day when I when I grow up, I'm gonna be like Pastor Gary, and I'll have some some syllabuses and some some notes and some 
to give out and some CDs and some DVDs. I'm saying that I'm right. Well, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> Listen, thank God for you guys. That's always Second Corinthians five, Second Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. Second, uh, second. I'm sorry, First Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. Second Corinthians, second chapter, verse fourteen. Now thanks be unto God, who always calls us to triumph in Christ Jesus, and you have got to be encouraged to that. Amen. Amen. Ain't God good?